good morning everyone and uh, welcome to this session on believers um, authority and demonology we will pray and get started i want to request one of our online students to pray you can unmute and and pray we we will be able to hear you All right. Uh, not sure if they are able to, you know, connect from where they are. So that's okay. We one of our on-campus students can lead in prayer. Rin, can you pray? Thank you, Jesus, for this day, and thank you for this time that we have. To, um to come together and to know more about you and your word. And Lord, I pray, Lord, um, that uh, we would uh, learn more and go in wisdom and um, the knowledge of your word. And thank you, Jesus, that um, you would uh, help Pastor Nancy to speak and to share what she has to share and uh, that we would be able to understand and grasp it. Thank you, Jesus, for everything. I surrender everything into your hands. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. So we had some really uh, interesting questions in the last class. And, uh, you know, it made me think, I went back and checked up uh, many of the answers. So um, like that whole incident where Jesus cast out the demon and the demons went into the pigs. I think the best answer that best answer in the sense, the most uh, convincing answer, it feels like what you said, Nikhil, that for one soul, um, riches are not comparable, which is why you know God was okay to um, have, for people to have a loss of the temporal or the earthly riches for one soul. Uh, and then, you know, all the other, questions about the end and all but most importantly you know what it helps us what um, it tells us is that there are so many people who don't know god and if this is the reality that there is a heaven and a hell uh, then uh, you know how much we must pray for them and how much we must you know ask god for his grace to to serve to take the word of the gospel out that becomes very important Okay. So, uh, good. Let's keep learning more. Uh, good morning to all the online students. I can see your messages. Uh, okay, Nina has joined us online today. So, that's nice. Nina is also uh, in the, our on campus. Nina is, is online. Okay, fine. So, uh, we were talking about the nature of Satan and his demons. We've understood uh, the personality of Satan and what he does. We also uh, talked a little bit about demonic spirits. So let me go into the nature of demonic spirits uh, today. Demonic spirits, just like Satan, who has a personality and uh, a focus in the activities does, that he does, like a deceiver, accuser, tempter, uh, even demonic spirits have a specific function. So based on their function, uh, they have a name or title. So there are spirits which are known as deaf and dumb spirit. Why? Because they cause deafness and dumbness. Okay. So in that way, uh, they are defined. There are There's an entire list in our notes. I'll just read out some of the names. Spirit of Antichrist, deceiving spirits, doctrines of demons, or in other words, demons who give certain doctrines to people to confuse them jealous spirit meaning there is a spirit of jealousy that can work in people there can be a familiar spirit okay a familiar spirit blind spirit spirit of infirmity uh, unclean spirit foul spirit 
spirit of disobedience, spirit of divination, lying spirit. Okay, and it, you know, it goes on. There are other references also spirit of heaviness, harlotry, bondage, fear, error. So the way we understand this is they will do that work. So if it's a spirit of fear, it will cause fear. Now, everything is not a spirit. That we must recognize. Let's say someone is uh, feeling very fearful. Okay, and um, they feel fearful regarding, uh, you know, certain certain decisions that they have to make. And in that phase of their lives, if they are being fearful again and again, it can just be that person. You understood? It can just be. Um, let's take for example, I'm in a in a time in my life where I have to make some important decisions, and I'm getting scared. It's just me. Fear is a normal emotion. Okay. However, what we see is that at some point, if I am not overcoming that natural fear uh, in, in a godly way, like use the godly principles, take courage, declare scriptures, pray, and all, and make good choices, overcome the fear. If I don't do that, and if I keep opening myself up uh, to the enemy, then the next thing is there can be the influence of a spirit of fear. That is different. So everyone who is afraid, we should not say, uh, you have a spirit of fear. That wouldn't be right. But at some point, when there is the influence of that particular spirit, then we say the spirit of fear is at work. Similarly, other things, disobedience. Now, For example, if a little child is being disobedient, can, a li can little children be disobedient? Yeah, they can be really naughty and they can they won't listen. But that's not spirit of disobedience. That's just normal, natural disobedience. But at some point, okay, here it talks about people when, when it says spirit of disobedience is working in, in the people of the world. So Spirit of disobedience is a spiritual influence over the people. So in the same way, there are other things. Spirit of bondage, spirit of error, spirit of heaviness. These are demonic spirits. And whenever we are aware that demonic spirits are involved, it's a task for um, you know, spiritual warfare, where we cast them out or you know, where we work in a way that we address the spirit. Because when you when we know there is a spirit, um, we can't only you know sort of counsel the person, talk to them. It may help. It may help. We'll see later on how um, how to help somebody who is influenced by demonic spirits. We'll see that. But ultimately, what do we want when we know there is a spirit involved? The best thing is to cast out that spirit. So that's how we would work. So in other words, there are kinds of demonic spirits and they are very specialized in what they do. So when we read a name or uh, while praying, you know, sometimes we can discern, oh, this is the spirit which is working in this person. Then the activities of that person will be along those lines. Let's say spirit of jealousy. Then the behavior of the person, the things the person does, it's all you know, jealousy, jealousy, jealousy. It's sort of in line with that. That's how we identify. This is all just for our information. Uh, so what are some other things we can uh, understand about demonic spirits? We know that demonic spirits, they believe and tremble. Uh, you know, when when before God, they believe and they tremble before God. In the book of James, it says even demon spirits, they believe in God and they tremble before God. So uh, they know. Next, they have names because we call them by name. What is your name? When Jesus asked, what did the Spirit say? Uh, our name is Legion because we are many. There is a name. They generally tend to have a name. Then demons have degrees of wickedness as also degrees of power. You remember when Jesus cast out the demon, what did we read in Matthew chapter 12? The demon came out and then it wandered. And then it brought seven other spirits more wicked 
than itself and try to occupy the place. So do you see that there are levels of wickedness? What is the spirit trying to do? Bring other spirits of greater influence. So in the kingdom of darkness or the demonic realm, there are hierarchies. There is an hierarchy. So there are levels. Uh, you, we might see that uh, there, there is a sort of a darker influence right that some other spirits also have and we must be aware of this demons have a will which means they can make decisions so they decide you know what they want the pigs so they can think they can decide what they want to do because who are they actually who are these demons Who are these demons? Fallen angels. Angels have a will. They, they can make choices. And no wonder. You know, demons also can make choices. So they have a will. Um, then demons know believers who walk in authority. In Acts 19, we said that uh, the demons responded and said, uh, Jesus we know, Paul we know, who are you? So even demons know in the kingdom of God, you know, the people who are walking in authority in God. So uh, it, it, they should act. I've told this earlier. We are aware about demons and that scares us. Actually, they are aware of us and that truth scares them also. So as you can notice. So, uh, you know, we... we we can find some confidence in that, that, uh, oh, praise God, because of the authority that we have in Christ. Uh, actually, the demons are aware of those who are walking in authority in Christ. Demons are not dead people. We have clarified that. Demons are not even, uh, you know, some, some random spirits. They are not like that. They are fallen angels. And we must be assured of, we must be clear about it. Um, because otherwise, what happens in the last class we discussed, people have stories, isn't it? That somebody died and now they have become a spirit. Uh, now what is going to happen? But in the Bible, you don't see all that. Demons already exist. They are uh, spirits of angels. But sometimes people say that they are offsprings offspring of angels and women in uh, Noah's times. Do you re remember the earth was so uh, corrupted, there was a lot of sin. So there is some story there about uh, the sons of God or the angels marrying the sons of, marrying the daughters of men. But you see, even that particular incident, uh, we don't have more details. Only once it's mentioned. But based on that, People say many things like now they have become demons, but there's no basis for it in scripture. So we wouldn't, you know, go into all that. Very little information in the Bible about it. Demons understand their time on the earth. Remember? Uh, I think Vimal shared it last time. He said uh, that when the demons said, why have you come before our time? So they know that they have a short time. So when somebody has a short time and they want to cause maximum destruction, will they be active or inactive? They'll be very active because they want to cause maximum damage uh, before they leave. They are aware that their time is limited and it is short. Demons also know their final destination, that they are created for um, eternal you know, eternal condemnation, separation from God. So in the last class, all of you had questions about, uh, uh, you know, hell. Uh, hell, now people are going to hell, then what will happen in the end? Uh, will Hell is already there. So where will Satan, his demons, everyone be thrown? So in the Bible, there are some terms which describe hell and all. You don't have to get into it. But for our understanding, Bible says that in the end, 
after all the final judgment uh, satan his demons and those who don't believe in god they will be cast into the lake of fire okay so that is the ultimate sort of a hell but now we just use the term hell a place of torment a place of separation from god uh, to you know, talk about where people go if they if they don't believe in jesus okay so uh, and um, hell or sheol somebody mentioned that it's all the same thing it's all the same thing um, and <coughs> hades hades is a is a term which is used hades is a term which is used to um, like in the times before jesus died they would use the term hades uh, to talk about hell but there was also abraham's bosom as a part of hades okay now abraham's bosom is not hell it's that place called paradise but after i told you this after jesus came and you know he took the keys or the authority um, from hades he goes to hades he takes uh, the the keys after that paradise doesn't exist so in hades you have only hell you don't have paradise you only have heaven and hell okay so that's how it works uh, yes anand you have something Um, okay, so Anand's question is uh, because uh, demons have a will, uh, is there a possibility of them being forgiven? My answer would be no at this point, because uh, like I think the time is over. That's my understanding from what I see in the Bible. They also know now. Time is up. Uh, I don't think there's any uh, option for repentance anymore. what about okay uh, demon spirits they are fallen angels uh, which are the spirits you are talking about ah so uh, what anand is asking is uh, people say that when someone dies they will become a spirit and they will haunt the house you know how much truth is there in that in the bible we know that people are spirits only we all are actually we are spirit but we are living in a body when we die that's what i'm saying every human being who dies goes either to heaven or to hell depending on the decision about jesus that's all there is no more wandering on the earth haunting the house it's not there in the bible I'm not able to hear you. Mm. You're right. So uh, what Anand is saying is, in some experiences, we find that uh, maybe the demon speaks and says, I am the spirit of so and so, and you know, such such things. But we have understood uh, right now that they are deceiving spirits. They lie. They don't tell the truth many a time. So, you know, if you're sitting and listening to them a lot, one or two things, okay, it makes sense to ask and find out. Then you know how to minister to the person. But beyond that, listening to them is a waste of time because they may be lying to us. Uh, see, there is one incident. This is uh, in uh, when when uh, Saul, when Samuel dies, he tries to hear from God. He does, you know, some things which are displeasing God, and then uh, some like the image of Samuel comes to speak to him. All that is demonic. 
it's not possible for the spirit of Samuel to come back. We don't have any basis for that in the Bible. But demon spirits can do all this. They can pretend like a human being and uh, get that personality appearance. They can do it. Human spirits, no, there is no possibility. Yes, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Correct, correct. So, okay. So, uh, what you're asking is when people are demonized, sometimes they talk and they give you some information. Uh, see, God is omniscient, God knows everything. God knows the past, God knows the present, God knows the future. Every other creature, like even us, we don't know the future. Only through the gifts of the Spirit or the wisdom of God, we can. Uh, hear from God what is going to happen. When it comes to demons, they are also like Asuni. They know the past. Because past has already taken place. They know. Many things they know. If they say something like, oh, uh, your father's name is this, and you live near this uh, uh, banyan tree, everybody knows, even the neighbors know there is a banyan tree near their house. So what happens is they just use the existing information to manipulate. You got it? Uh, so even if they say something like a future, you are planning to go and study in this place, see, that is all leaked information. Maybe that person or their family member had a conversation. They can overhear. They can listen to everything. So they must have get gotten the information that's why we read about like spying spirits what do they do they go and pick up information they they watch out they get the information and just to deceive the people they'll tell them and people will be very impressed and they oh my goodness this knows everything it's not like that they are not omniscient no they know only the things which have happened which are happening limited like us in that sense so it's all a lie, uh, Anand. Okay. Yeah, so we shouldn't go by the, the lies. OK. Um, OK, Prabhu says, uh, students here, can, if you could please use the mic, that would be helpful. So next time, if we are sharing, then uh, kindly use the mic. Yeah. Sorry, uh, online students, sometimes I, I totally get into my mind is here, so I forget to remind. Is the question? Yeah, please go ahead. Ma'am, uh, as a human body. Just one second. Prabhu, can you hear? Or, or others also can. Okay, yeah, he can hear. Yes, please go ahead. Um, as a human body, if we got fire, so it harms our body. Mm. But in hell, there is a fire. But there is a there is no body. Mm -hmm. There is only spirit. Okay. So fire can harm a spirit also. Okay. Uh, so my understanding, I'll, I'll share with you. See the spirit. We will study about this um, in in a deep way when we do understanding the prophetic. So the spirit man has senses. We know of six senses which our normal uh, you know body has like uh, hearing, seeing, taste, touch, right? Feeling, all these things. But the spirit man, it's the same senses and it could have more senses also. We don't know. So they can feel everything. You remember Lazarus and uh, the rich man? When he's in hell, he's saying, I'm thirsty. Give me a... So what's the meaning of that? Spirit can feel it. That torment is very real. Spirit can feel the pain, but spirit can also experience the joy. You know, joy in the presence of God. People who have died, gone to heaven, they are feeling joy. So spirit can feel everything. Yeah. 
yes yes then um pastor like um how this devils like they can um like these birds the young birds they uh, take the like they they uh, dwell in a human spirit they need and so they go and dwell in human body so uh, can the angels do the same can the angels do the same Mm, okay. Can the angels go and occupy someone's body? I don't. I mean, I can't think of any reference where see we we see that happening. When we read about angels, angels are by themselves. Like if you talk about, you know, uh, Michael, is that? War, uh, Prince of Persia, Prince of uh, these. There's a war going on. So, angel is the angel there as a spirit, or Gabriel comes uh, to bring a message. Gabriel is Gabriel, not in anyone's body. Can they? I don't know. Uh, I think it could be a matter of permission, uh, God's permission, or something. I feel uh, because. The, it's not given in the Bible. It's just my feeling that maybe there is a possibility, but because these are all good angels, we also know that uh, in the book of Psalms, it says that they do uh, what God tells them to do, the angels. So they will not do anything which God is not telling them to do. So they need God's permission, isn't it? So because they don't have permission, they will not enter a, a body. And because we see, uh, like, um... Three men uh, coming to Abraham, and he knew they were angels, right? Hmm. Okay. Something that's why I'm asking. Abraham. Yeah. So three men coming, and they were angels. Yeah. Ah. So it doesn't say that the the spirit entered humans, no. But angels can be seen like humans. Does does that make sense? See, if if we say that. I have seen an angel. That angel has somehow physically appeared. Okay, and and we are perceiving that angel. It doesn't mean the angel has entered somebody's body. You got it. So when angels visited, it simply means angels came, and you could see them like in the physical form. And there are uh, you know incidents like that in the Bible. Where uh, angels came, they warred, they came for war, and all. So it's possible that angels can take human form. They can take human form. There's a difference. They don't enter a human being, but they can take human form. Yes, they can't enter. Mm. Why? Okay. Mike is over here, but anyway, Anand is saying angels cannot enter, and he will explain why. So uh, he's talking about an experience where uh, someone was speaking like angels. This is a human being speaking like angels? Not possible. Hmm? They are demon. See, they could just be pretending. They could be pretending also, no? Yeah, please use the mic. Uh, so we'll try and complete this portion today. And next class onwards, we'll start with chapter 4. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if, if we talk where the hell is means, uh, can, we, can, we, can we tell that particularly where the hell is? Mm. I mean, people used to say like there is an Austral Australian uh, uh, in general. They wrote like uh, some scientists dig the into the earth, and they heard some voices. 
from uh, under on the earth and they found this hotness they calculated the hotness also and in another in another way there are 12 students who who got took them uh, to underground and uh, he showed everything uh, how we can consider those things yeah so um, you know when you have stories like this uh, it's hard to believe because we know that you know god created the heavens and the earth uh, but in the earth god put hell the bible doesn't say that no in the earth god has incorporated hell we don't have any reference for that now people hearing sounds of hell uh, all that is possible because we are also human spirit and i told us that our spirit can sense spiritual things from the spiritual kingdom so maybe they heard the sounds but is it coming from the earth i don't think so see the exact spot the same question which you asked where where exactly is hell we can also ask heaven no we say god is in heaven god where is heaven tell me in the universe see the created universe it's a you know it's a created space it's a created space uh, but the place where god dwells we don't have any reference uh, which we can say that hey it is connected to this known universe or it's not connected to the known universe but there are some terms which are used third heavens so when we talk about the place where god lives uh, we say we can we can say third heaven we can use that word okay so it's like that uh, anand to tell the spot it, it's it's not given so we can't tell yeah right any any question Okay, it's good. I mean, I think we're clarifying most of the points here. Then as we go forward, it'll get easier. I can go faster. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, Rin, um, can you please repeat that for the benefit of online? In the Bible, also, there are references like uh, that, that are devil was cast to the earth mm. so the devil was cast on the earth it says the devil was not like hell is not on earth right so right now where is the devil he's on the earth only and also it says in one of the songs mm -hmm. mm. Like where David says, where can I go from the spirit? Where can I go from my presence? If I go to the... Psalm 139. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. You are there and something like If I go into the... Okay. No, but uh, I mean... In... Or go into the depths of uh, yeah. hell. See, that, that all that is... Uh, figure of speech. Figure of speech. It's raining cats and dogs. Is it really cats and dogs are falling from the sky? No, it's raining heavily. That's the meaning. So it's just a figure of speech. The depths of hell. It gives us a picture. Maybe you know, like of course later on we know that uh, Satan will be cast into the abyss. It is a depth. So with those kind of things in mind. Uh, they are writing what they are they are writing so for us to take it very literally uh, may not be you know the exact thing to do and uh, you were saying about the spirits mm -hmm. uh, like spirit of fear spirit of uh, all these other spirits uh, so um and you also said like the devils have a strategy and uh, like if like they have a particular function that they have and mm -hmm. so um, so we can say like whoever has a spirit of fear and they have that 
parts of the demon in them. Yes. Yes. When they have uh, the influence, that in the next chapter we see that there are levels of influence. Okay. So when you say spirit of fear, like especially for a believer, I don't want to confuse you now. For an it's not always having the demon inside you. It's not always that. Demon can be outside you and influence you also. You can be bound, you can be uh, oppressed by the spirit of fear. That doesn't mean that spirit is, you know, demonizing you also. But there is an influence. Yeah. Yes. Um, as I heard that uh, hell is uh, created for Satan, mm. right? So why he is still in this earth? Why God didn't come and throw him into the hell? Into hell, yeah. So the answer for that, uh, um, Ch uh, Chirag, it's not clear given in the Bible, but we know what God has done. Why? Not not very um, you know, clear on that, but what God has done is God has given a timeline. That is why the demons also say that uh, you have come before our time. So what? basically it's like this. God was in heaven with the angels, then Lucifer and the angels sinned. Uh, then once God, you know, like uh, uh, Satan was cast down. Okay, then we know that he uh, he was cast down on the earth. So the earth was created. Satan was cast over here. Now he is here, tempting, doing all his work, till one particular time. Only God knows which is that time. At that time, God is going to bind him. Okay. Uh, even after that, there will be ten. Uh, there will be thousand years rule. We call it millennium. But towards the um, end, I think, of those thousand years rule, God is going to again release Satan. Then he will continue his works, you know, tempting people, all that. But after that will come the final judgment. When the final judgment is done, that is when we read that Satan will be thrown into the lake of fire. And for Satan, it is said that he'll be thrown into the depths of the lake of fire. So I think that spot is known something as the abyss. Abyss. So he'll go, he'll be thrown there and he'll be there forever. That's how it works. Okay. So, like, uh, when he did, uh, he went against God. Like, my question is, like, when, like, why in that the moment God did throw Satan in the hell? Yeah, so that's what I'm telling you. The answer to that, why God didn't do it, we don't have the answer. Because the Bible doesn't talk about it. Okay. But what God has done, it is there. So as I shared in the last class, my feeling is, maybe God gave some time for him to change. But the time is up. Like completely, he must have gone beyond repair. Then after that, God just made this uh, plan of judgment. That's my feeling. Yeah. Right. Mm. God uh, tell Jonah to go uh, Nineveh, but he went. But he what God did? He uh, he threw in the sea, and one big fish came. So it's kind of repentance time for to him. Correct. So it's same way, like who can we consider Satan? God give him chance once more, if he will repent. It's it's. Can I take it like this? Yeah. So see, my feeling is before he got thrown out, maybe God would have given him that chance, but he must have crossed every limit. That's why finally throw him out. Finished. That could be the whole thing. All right, so fine. We've we've understood a couple of things about uh, demons. Um, they have a time on the earth. They have a final destination. Some of uh, the fallen angels held up in darkness. Okay, this also you need to know. 
okay some of the fallen angels not all of them are on the earth some of them are in hades okay so please make a note of that there are, there is um, scripture references to that second peter chapter 2 verse 4 and uh, jude 1 verse 6 they are in a place called uh, tartarus which is the deepest part of hades so that is where the these demons are now held as um captives then demons influence all spheres of human existence we talked about it earlier um and uh, yeah we will talk a little bit about angel beings uh, but there's a question from nina john where do believers who have passed on go this would be in the spirit as bodies are yet to be resurrected absent from the body present with the lord would what would it mean okay uh, so yes sir, nina believers who have passed on or who have um, experienced physical death here we read in uh, you know the book of thessalonians that they they are in heaven now so absent in the body present with the lord simply means they are in heaven so two of your questions there uh, i have answered and in the book of thessalonians we see that they will come back with christ during the second coming and the bodies will be resurrected okay and the bible says bible also teaches us that god is going to raise up the bodies of believers and they will put on they they will put on um, uh, you know corruptible be turned into incorruptible so we refer to them as the glorious body or the resurrected body yeah so we have all of us believers we have the resurrected body and resurrected body to understand it you can think you can study about you know jesus when he was resurrected how his body was what what are the things he did he was still talking to people he was still walking all so god's going to give us those glorious bodies uh, nina now they are in the spiritual state yes so currently those who have passed away they are spirit man their spirit man is with god in heaven bodies are here buried or whatever has happened to their bodies spirit is with god so nothing has happened to their means spirit is not destroyed it's with god so it's a very comforting thought for especially when you know our loved ones uh, are not with us but they are believers in the lord jesus we have the assurance that now they are in heaven with god okay sure thank you uh, so coming now to a little bit about angels questions uh, okay okay can ask uh, ma'am god created uh, certain very precious materials mm. but in comparison of him we created by mud mm. so uh, god created us in his image so uh, god have no image god is a spirit being so how okay okay so see when we say uh, god created satan with uh, you know all precious materials uh, precious is so it's a relative term meaning if something is precious for me it need not be precious for you for example if there is a mother and uh, i have uh, her baby is with me and i have uh, a 1000 rupees okay and i tell that mother i will give you 1000 rupees but i will not give you your baby okay you will become rich or let's say 1 crore maybe it's more money so i'll give you 1 crore rupees you become rich no problem but i am going to keep your child what do you think the mother will say keep your money give me my child because precious is very like that person knows like what is precious so in that sense 
I am sure that the way God made Satan was precious in its own way because all of God's creation is beautiful, amazing. So He made it in a precious way. Him in a precious way. He made man also in a precious way. You know, our what He wanted from angels and man is different. So, but He made us best. If He made angels, He made best. He made man best. So there's no question of comparing who's better than who. Okay, that is one point. Now. Man made in the image of God. When you study that word, right, those Hebrew words, image doesn't mean picture, photo, idol. Image is not that. Image is likeness. You know, sometimes we say, like father, like son. Son is just like the father. What do we mean? He may not look like the father. Face may be different from the father, but behavior, attitude, you can, when you see the son, you feel, oh, just like his father. So that is the image, likeness, likeness in terms of, you know, uh, nature uh, or authority. We talked about it. God gave authority, dominion, representative of God. That's how we understand it. Make sense? Okay. Why didn't God take back, you know, uh, many of his abilities, is what you're saying. I don't think his abilities are the same anymore, no? We've seen his nature now, deceiver, tempter, accuser, all those things. Yes, he has certain powers, but I don't think he has all the all the you know the the uh, permissions and he's not like before he has lost some things as far as i can see yeah but uh, all his privileges of being in heaven worshiping god and many other things i'm sure there's a lot of privileges in heaven all that he doesn't have anymore so there are changes okay Sure. So I think we uh, have completed uh, this session also, uh, but no problem. We will go faster from the next class. We'll talk about angels and then uh, focus our focus of this subject. Uh, in, a, in a couple of chapters, we are going to learn about the cross. OK, so. That is the most important thing that I want to discuss with all of us. Yes, okay, demons, we're trying to understand, but uh, let's not give too much, too much time to demons. Let's give more time to, you know, the work of the cross, uh, which is coming up soon. Okay, so let's pray and close. Uh, can somebody who has not spoken in the mic pray today? That's Francis. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Holy Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for this class. You help dear man to uh, talk the doubts, answering the doubts. Thank you for your wisdom for that. Thank you for being present with us. What we learn is we will be use, going to use for to our daily life. Being present with us, being present with us in the name of Jesus. Pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Francis. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Uh, please go to the notes yeah, and have a wonderful weekend. We will connect again next week. God bless you. Bye for now.